Hello everybody, welcome back to Mark's Wheels and Wings. Today we're going to talk about solar. You know, it never fails that anytime we tow this thing anywhere, we always get peppered with all kinds of questions about custom build, where did I get it, did I do it myself, everything else, but usually every single person asks about the solar system and how that thing works in this trailer. So we're going to take a look at it. So let's go check it out. So in this electrical system, there are three major components. The solar panel input, the charge controller, and then the output to your battery. First, the solar panel. So this is a 100 watt solar panel. It's linked in the description below, uh, Renogi. Uh, there are several different models and several different companies who make these. But this one's fairly simple. It's, uh, like I said, 100 watts, so that means it's able to supply 12 volts and 5 amps worth of current uh, to the charge controller, which in turn charges your battery. There are some newer panels uh, that I've found uh, just recently that are actually flexible that could uh, better fit the contours of a, a Ben Roy or a teardrop trailer build. But in uh, 2016, this is what they had, so that's what I built. And it attaches to the hatch frame just on four uh, brackets that I have screwed in, and it's uh, fairly secure. I mean, well, it hasn't fallen off yet, so it's pretty secure. And then the panel connects into the system through just a couple of male-female plugs uh, that I have just inside the hatch. These are the plugs that connect the solar panel into the system, and so it's easy to disconnect and uh, isolate the panel if there's any kind of an electrical problem. This is the charge controller. It takes the inputs from the solar panel, and then there's an output to the battery, and then also your output for your electrical needs. Now in 2016, this was uh, pretty much the simplest charge controller uh, that I found. I was really just going for the most cost-effective model, and this is what I chose. The controller that's linked in the description below actually has two USB plugs installed in it already, so uh, you don't have to do any external uh, USB connections if you don't need. My favorite on the lift is the battery. Now I'm sure that battery technology has advanced since I built this in 2016, but this is a tried and true 75 amp hour marine battery and it suits the power needs I have for running lights and stereo and USB charging just fine. I don't know how long this setup would work with an inverter for AC power, uh, but uh, I'm sure it would be fine for filling air mattresses, uh, but a microwave oven might be a little too much. Some of the charge controllers available today are a little more sophisticated than this one, but even on this uh, simple model, it's, uh, you can modify the uh, charge rate to suit your needs. In my case, since I only take the trailer outside for when it's being used, I have it set up to where it, if the sun is shining, it gives a full charge to the battery. But you can set up trickle charges or to have it charge just say one hour a day if you're storing uh, the, the vehicle outside so it's always getting sunshine. But they're pretty flexible and uh, just keep those instructions handy so that you can go through and set up all those things uh, once you get this installed. Power comes out of the unit up here and goes up to the uh, fuse block for the positive and then the negative terminal bus. Now this uh, fuse block here is a little bit simpler and the uh, fuse block that I have linked in the description is a little more user friendly in that it has a hot bus that doesn't require the use of these jumpers. So you don't have to do any extra wiring on that. And then from there, the power goes out to all your uh, individual items. And then this negative bus terminal is just what connects all the ground back into your battery. The electrical components that I run include the USB cigarette lighter hookup, the hatch light, the stereo and dome light inside, and finally the porch light. And I installed all the wiring prior to uh, skinning the uh, outside with the aluminum 
So the wiring runs all through the ceiling and out to all of the electrical outlets needed. One thing I would recommend uh, if you are gonna make a build like this, uh, if you're making a whole trailer, is get uh, spend the extra money and get a, a vent with a fan built in it. Just notice sometimes when we're out camping that uh, a little bit of ventilation would be nice. I did have the forethought when I was putting this all together to actually pre-stage a uh, wire out to this unit so that if I changed my mind and got a vent fan in the future, then it would be set up and ready to go. Now this system is completely independent from the plug-in to your uh, vehicle bumper that runs your uh, brake lights and uh, turn signals and uh, all of that. So it's uh, completely self-contained. And uh, I chose to build it without a external power plug or shore power. I just wanted this to be a completely independent system and fairly simple. Now, if you store your system inside so it doesn't get regular sunlight, uh, chances are you might end up after a couple of months running the battery down to below a level that will power the charge controller. But all it takes if that happens is just a simple jump start from your vehicle to the main battery and just connect those plugs via your jumble cables. That'll give it some uh, current to be able to then re-energize the charge controller and then you'll be back in business uh, out in the sunshine charging the whole system. So that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in once again. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below if you want uh, updates on new content and also all the products that I've talked about today are linked below in the description. As always, feel free to ask questions in the comments below and I'll try to get those answered as quickly as I can for you. But like I said, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.